Shabbat Shalom. Names are powerful. They not only shape our identity, but they tell our story. The story of our families, the story of our people, or maybe another story. In the story of this Parsha, Vayishlach, Jacob wrestles with an angel, a messenger from God, and he does this all night until dawn. The result of that experience, of that intense experience, a new name. The angel changes his name from Jacob to Yisrael, reflecting this transformative encounter with the divine the night before. Jacob then turns to the angel and asks really a fair question. Hagida na shmecha, please tell me your name, asking the, the angel. The angel answers, you must not ask my name. So why can't Jacob ask for the angel's name? A midrash gives one answer, explaining that angels have no fixed names. Rather, their names change all depending on the service, on what they are sent to do, what they should carry out. In other words, angels don't have names because angels don't have the identities that are tied to names. Names and identity are intertwined, and they don't have, like we have, an, an identity, a human identity. So the next question, if names are human, does God have a name? Of course, we know God has many names. Most of them, however, are not proper names. Most of the names we have for God are descriptive and relational kinds of names. So we have, of course, Adonai, our Lord, Eloheinu means, what does Eloheinu mean? Our God. El means God, so Eloheinu is, is, is describing our God. Not quite a name. The one proper name that is uniquely God's, we have a, a four-letter name, yud He vav He, which is God's name, and it's also unpronounceable. And we, are, we, we treat it with, with extra care and with some distance. So it's not the most usable, user-friendly name, the, one, the name we do have for God. So to call God in prayer, what do we do? We use human names. We use the names of our ancestors. We call on the God of Abraham. We say, Elohe Avraham. We call on the God of Sarah. We say, Elohe Sarah. We connect God to these human names, to these human identities, because that is how we can call them, We're using ancestor names. And we also, so we give God, in a way we give God an ancestor name. We call God by the name of our ancestors. And we also give children ancestor names too. Many of us were given a Hebrew name derived from our ancestors, either named directly for an ancestor or in a, in a, in a tradition of being connected to ancestors. That name connects us to one or two or three or maybe even a thousand generations back. I was named for my grandfather's Aunt Frances, who adopted him after he came to America, um, after surviving the Holocaust. I have her name, Frances, as my middle name in English. I'm Deborah Frances. More important even to my parents was to give me her Hebrew name, Sipora, and in Yiddish, Cyril. So my Hebrew name, Hebrew Yiddish Jewish name, is Tzipora Tziro. 
And this has always confused people a lot. Um, through, since, you know, since I was a little kid, this has been very confusing to people. Because they, of course, assume that my Hebrew name, since my English name is Deborah, they assume that my Hebrew name will be Devorah. I heard it. All of you would be confused if you met me and you had to guess my Hebrew name. But my parents had their very good reasons and they had other ideas and they, they weren't so concerned about the confusion. So sometimes this confusion arises when I am called to the Torah for an aliyah. The Gabbai will kindly ask, um, you know, ask me to say my Hebrew name, but they'll start already, they, know, they think they know Devorah, and they'll have me fill in the rest, and I correct them sometimes, my name is Tzipora Cyril, and they go with it, which is, which is generous. Um, so in that context, of course, there isn't time to share more, but we have a little bit of time here. I can tell you more about that Hebrew name. Sipora was my great, great aunt Frances, and I am so proud to be named after her. My grandfather wrote about Frances in his Holocaust testimony. He was the only one of his immediate family to survive. And he was the only one of his extended family to survive the concentration camps. There were two others who survived in other ways. But of 33 extended family members, there were only three of them who survived. And he was only, only one from the camps. So he arrived in America at 20 years old. And, he, and these are his words. When we're, we were given permission to leave Ellis Island, my father's brother, Uncle Lou, and his wife, Aunt Frances, were there to pick me up and bring me to their home in Brooklyn. I also, I soon found out that Uncle Lou and Aunt Frances were childless, and they told me that they would like me to stay with them. While others in the family showed an interest in me, it was the two of them who really cared for me from the moment I arrived. Not only did I find a home there, but also like two caring parents, they were determined to guide me and help me achieve my goals. My Aunt Frances was instrumental in opening educational opportunities for me. When the neighborhood high school refused my admittance to day school because of my lack of English knowledge. She found one that did admit me. She spent many evenings with me, helping me with my homework until English was no longer a barrier. When two years later I received my high school diploma, it was she who encouraged me to pursue a college education. And she guided me till I graduated. The love we shared was mutual, and I will always cherish their memory as devoted and loving parents, and later as loving grandparents to my children. That was my grandfather. Back to my voice. I am so deeply proud to be Deborah Francis, and especially to be Tzipora. So when I am called to the Torah, I am Harav Tzipora Tzirol, Bat Dov Baruch, my father's name, Umiriam Penina, my mother's name. In this way, my name links me to at least three generations, to my parents, to my grandfather, and to his Aunt Frances. And other than, the, than these times when I'm called to the Torah, there are very few other times when I use this full Hebrew name. When I lived in Jerusalem, I had the chance to be called Tsipora every day. So for the first few months, I was Tsipora in class, I was Tsipora ordering coffee at Aroma, I was Tsipora on the bus, I was Tsipora in any, any time that I could be. Ultimately, it didn't feel right, which was surprising. I thought I would be, always be Tsipora whenever I'm speaking Hebrew but it didn't feel right to me because Tzipora is my name for 
holy matters, for this, for the stuff we do here, for sacred times, my special Jewish Hebrew name. So eventually in Israel, I started going by Deborah again, though not Devorah, Deborah, um, because like I started with, names are so powerful. We have very strong feelings about the names we use, the names other people use, because they reflect our identities and they honor and connect us to our ancestors. In the Torah, names can also bring healing. Abraham and Sarah are only able, this is one example, there are more, there are more, are only able to conceive after God changes their names from Avram and Sarai to Avraham and Sarah. So their new names bring with them the miracle they're looking for to have fertility. And today, some have the custom that if a person is gravely ill, we add, name, we add Hebrew names to their name. We add a name like Raphael, which is connected to healing, or Chaya, which is connected to life. We add, we add to their Hebrew names. Our names, in addition to reflecting our identity and connecting us with our ancestors and maybe bringing us healing in a time when we need it, are also a way that we keep accountable to be the best versions of ourselves. When I think of being Tsipora and I think of who she was and, and who, what she means to my family, I feel called to live up to that. I feel called to live up to who she was and to the people she supported um, in the generations of my family. There's a teaching in the Talmud that before Yom Kippur, we are judged based on four types of actions. And so three of those we will maybe expect, natural ones. We are judged on how we give tzedakah, that makes sense. We are judged on how we call out, how we cry out in prayer, so that makes sense. We are judged on how we change our deeds for the better, if we start to act um, in, a, in a better way. This one is surprising. This fourth one is surprising. It's going to connect to names, of course. So we also can do well in, around Yom Kippur, we can do well in the Book of Life by changing our name is actually listed as an option. So I think this is a pretty good trick, maybe. I wouldn't recommend it, but a good trick. If you're not feeling so good about how you've been acting in the year, you're worried that you might not measure up come Yom Kippur, you can change your name and in that way possibly bring a fresh start. I don't know if that would fool God. I would not recommend this. I'm just, I want the record to show that I don't recommend changing your name in order to do tshuva, in order to do well. Um, there are a lot of good reasons to change your name, but this is not one. But if we consider this idea from the Talmud from another angle, not as a way to get out of punishment or accountability, but that by keeping our names each Yom Kippur, we are remaining accountable to ourselves and we have the opportunity to live up to the legacies of our ancestors. We have the opportunity to live up to our names. We can be proud not only of who we are, and if we're named after someone of who they were, we can also affirm our connection to parents if we use their name as part of ours. So I am Harav Tzipora Tzirol Bat Dov Baruch Umiryam Pnina. I'll ask you a kiddish, your name, and there's no pressure, but I would really like to know what is your Hebrew name. Were you named after someone? Do, what do you know about the person after whom you were named? And if you could use some help figuring out your Hebrew name, I would love to sit down together and we can investigate and we can put together, figure out what your Hebrew name is. So I'll close with Jacob's words to the angel, back to our Parsha. Jacob says, Hagidana Shemecha. Please tell me your name. 
please tell us your name. Please bring your whole self here to Bethel, your family history, your presence, your identity. We want to know you and we want to know your name. Shabbat Shalom.